Starting a new business, and particularly starting a photography business, is definitely one of the most exciting things in the world. One of the exciting aspects of launching a business is publishing your website to the world. Back in the day, putting up a website for your photography business usually meant hiring a designer and spending thousands of dollars on someone handcrafting you a website, but that's no longer the case. Nowadays, there are many DIY website builders, so building your own photography website is as easy as choosing a template and uploading your photographs. But there's a lot of things that photographers forget to put onto their website that they really, really should be, and that could be costing them money and losing them clients. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over what you should include in your photography business website. Let's roll the intro. What's going on guys, Connor Wells here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you're new around here, it's nice to meet you. My name is Connor Wells. I am a photographer, videographer, and podcast producer, and I make videos about those three subjects every single week. So if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be going over a few things which you should include on your photography business website. This could also include videography business, but I'm sort of focusing the approach to this as a photographer's website. So without further ado, let's get into the first things that you should include in your site. I think at the start, it's very, very important to know that I built my website without knowing a single piece of coding. That's because I chose a really, really great sort of DIY, make it your own website platform and that was Wix. Now this is not sponsored by Wix. I do really rave about Wix but that's probably because I run my entire photography business through all of their services that they include in, in their website building functions and all that sort of stuff but this is not sponsored by Wix. But they're just one of a few examples like Elementor and Squarespace where you can actually build your website from your home. You don't need to hire a designer and it's not gonna cost you thousands of dollars. When choosing a web hosting platform, it's important to select a company with fast performance and good security, as well as accessible customer service. Now, Wix's customer service has been absolutely spot on. For example, I had a problem with one of my portfolios when the galleries wasn't working and showing up properly. I called Wix's customer service and they were absolutely spot on, super helpful, really, really quick and reliable when it came to resolving that issue. Be sure to do your own research though. Don't just go off of my recommendation of Wix. Do your own research and look at the pros and cons. Look at some reviews about the different services and people's experiences with using them. For example, my good experience with Wix might be even better with Squarespace and vice versa. But try and get creative with your website. Try and make the website sort of fit your brand, your colors, and what you stand for as a photographer. There are so many templates on all of these services and there's loads and loads of them to choose from. And they're all really, really good you can customize them as well you can add your own logos fonts pictures and all the layout you could have the menu bar on the side you could have the menu bar on the top it's absolutely fantastic with what you can do when it comes to building your website so now that you've chosen a service which you're going to use to build your website now we're going to get into the things that you should include on your site your site really and clearly needs to highlight what you are as a photographer, what your photography business does and what you sort of specialize in. Now you might be only a portrait photographer where you only sort of take portraits of people. You might be a wedding photographer, you might be a food or product photographer. Make sure your homepage shows your possible clients and customers exactly what it is that you do and what you take pictures of. For example, I love taking portraits, but I don't just take portraits. I take family group photos. I take couple sessions. I take wedding photos. But I do like to focus my work more on the portrait side. So the majority of the photos on my homepage of my website in a little gallery is portraits. I found with using services like Wix and Squarespace, I have full control over what I display on my homepage and any of my pages for that matter. I can know who I'm wanting to target and how it will appear to them. The second thing you should include on your site is once you've started taking bookings or even just doing shoots for free you should try and get your friends and family and whoever you're shooting to submit a testimonial and that's why you should have a testimonial page over on your website now over on my website www.connorwells.com you can see it on the screen or click the link in the description so you can look at my site i have two sections for testimonials i have some on the home page and i actually have a dedicated page where people can submit their testimonials so i've got my website over here on my screen right now and i've got free images which is free images i've taken free clients, the dates, their names, and their testimonial. And that's pretty much right at the top of the homepage of my website. And why have I put that there? Because that's gonna be the first thing people see. They're gonna see those five-star reviews. They're gonna see those raving words about their experience of having a photo session with me. And that's very, very important. So I've said this in a lot of videos, but word of mouth is the greatest form of marketing there is. I am more than likely to use a service that one of my friends has raved about and said they had a good experience, they got good value from. 
than if I just see an advert appear on Facebook or Instagram. But a good marketing tip is you could do a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad of your testimonials to get a screenshot, add a photo, make it nice and you know professional looking and you could do a boosted post with that and, add, and advertise that because that's going to work really really great I think. Now if I look on my dedicated testimonial page people can see where they can submit a testimonial and they can also see the large number of te submitted testimonials. These are either imported through Facebook or actually submitted via my website and when I scroll down and look at all of them there's a lot of really really great testimonials there and that actually sort of fills me with confidence and reassures me that if I book a shoot with this guy, I'm gonna get a lot of value and have a good experience. Now we've spoken about uploading some photos to your homepage so you can showcase what you are as a photographer and what you like to shoot and what you specialize in. Now we're gonna talk about limiting the number of photos you put on your website. I know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but hear me out. In the case of your photography site, less is more. You want to demonstrate to your clients what you're good at as quickly as possible. Having too many galleries and images dilutes your message. You may shoot in a few photography genres but stick to the ones that meet your business and career goals if you want to do more sports photography make sure your portfolio lines up with that having an oversaturated portfolio can be a little bit confusing for anyone who's looking to, to view you and book you as a photographer. For example, as you can see on my site right now, I've got the section that says portfolio and a drop down menu that includes portrait, family, headshots, engagement, and all those sorts of things. They're all separated and not all clumped together because that would really, really sort of throw your crowds and, and, and it'll just be very confusing. So if I go down to my portrait section, you can see there's a few photo sets there. I've got a mixture of male and female models, different poses, different scenarios, but they are all portraits and there's not too many photos there. I only choose the best photos that I did from that session and sometimes even after a shoot I won't actually upload some of those photos to my website because I, I really just want the best of the best like work that I've got there. I update my portfolio and the photos on my website around every two to three weeks because I'll maybe take some photos, I'll do say 10 photo sessions and I'll look through them, handpick the best ones and compare it to the ones that are already there. And if it doesn't meet the standards that, you know, I think needs to be on my site and is actually the best of my work, then I won't put it up there. Maybe I'll save them for a different sort of form of marketing, but I only really handpick the best of my shots to go on the front pages of my website and my portfolio section. The next thing is keep the potential client in mind when you're creating your site. Now, when I'm on a website or if I'm in a shop, I want a great customer experience. If I've booked a service, I want to get some really, really good value. I don't want any faff. I don't want no fuss. I just want to sort of get there, do it, and you know, get what I want from, from that service. And that's why for me, I think contact forms are the best thing to have on your website. Don't just have a fill your name, an email, and your message because they're gonna to have to type all that in and then type a message, which is very long. And let's be honest, when we're filling out forms, especially online, we can't really be asked to type in paragraphs. So I make custom forms on my website, on my contact page. So I'm on my contact form page right now on my website. And obviously you've got the main things, which is first name, last name, email address. Now, there is the option to write a message if they want, but they don't have to do that because I've added some little drop down and tick the box sorts of things. So the client is probably going to want to tell me what they're after as quick as possible. So what type of session are you looking for to book? So there's an option which says, which type of session are you looking to book? And that could be portraits, couples, engagement, or a surprise pr proposal, business and branding content, and then wedding. So they can tick those and if it fits that, that's perfect. Then they've got, let me know a few dates and times that work for you. This helps save time and back and forth. So if the client is in a particular rush and needs some photos by this date, they can put those dates and I can check that in my calendar when I get that email that they filled out form. The next thing, I list all of my photography packages and prices on my website. So if they've, they've seen that, they can put that in the description below. So if they're interested in package number two, which is an hour and a half and 40 photos, they can tell me that. That way it alleviates the back and forth of me going, well, you could have this package or you could have that package. So that makes things a lot easier for the client as well. The last two things are what locations do you have in mind and be specific, which is always handy. Now the client may have a really, really specific idea for a photo suit location. If not, as you can see on my website now, I've got some location ideas over on my website. So those are the locations that I've shot at previous shoots and I think are really, really fun, they're different and varied. So the client could choose from either of them. And the last thing, which is just for me, so it knows where sort of my marketing is 
being successful is where did you hear about me? And that lists Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or even client referral. And they've also got the option to tell me which client referred them to me. Now the last thing to add to your photography website is online booking. Now, if you are just starting your photography business, I probably wouldn't do this step yet unless you're getting a regular stream of bookings. So the last two or three months, my calendars have been pretty much booked out. And that's all to do with online bookings because it's, it's ease and convenience to the client. Now on my booking page, I list my free photography packages, package one, two, and three, and their prices and the details of what those packages include. That alleviates any back and forth from the client asking me and messaging me what my prices are. If I don't get a message asking what my prices are, I know that my photography business website is working well because they've obviously been to my bookings page and they can see the prices of each individual package. So I'm on my photo package two page right here and that can show the client what they get from their photo session. And that is 40 photos, one to two outfits, one to two locations and roughly two week delivery. It's usually earlier than that, but we'll do a separate video about under promising and over delivery. The booking page of your website is definitely going to be one of the most important pages to work on when building your site. You should include testimonials. You you should include an actual online booking calendar with time slots, the details of each individual packages and the prices. You should include some photo location ideas. So if the client hasn't got any clue of where they want their photo shoot to take place, you can chuck some ideas to them. One thing I do is if I'm driving around and I notice a really, really cool spot, I'll pin it on Google Maps on my computer, on my Google account. I've got loads and loads of different pins, which could be really, really cool sort of photo shoot or video shoot location ideas. The next thing you should include on your booking page is some testimonials as well. So when clients are scrolling and looking down the pages and maybe a little bit torn of whether to book or not, and maybe they scroll down and see a really good testimonial, that's gonna fill them with some confidence and they'll be more inclined to book a photo shoot with you. And the final thing you should include on your website is frequently asked questions section, because that will get rid of a lot of back and forth and questions about what you do as a photographer, what you get, the do's and don'ts, the sort of house rules. So on my frequently asked questions section, I've got pretty much my frequently asked questions. So how long do sessions take? Can I bring a friend? Can I have the unedited and raw files? The answer to that is of course, no. What happens if I pay my invoice late, which is a regular occurrence? What happens if it rains? You know, all those sorts of questions that the client may have and want to ask you before you book a shoot or even after a shoot. I've spent a good year and a bit building my photography business website and really working it to be the site that represents me as a photographer and represents my business. And I regularly get compliments about my site and how easy it is to access and get information about what I do as a photographer and as a business. I hope you found these tips useful. If there's anything you think I've left out, maybe I'll do a part two to this video. But if you got some value, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video right over there.